using the macro scripts that uh, come with uh, Krakatoa, it's much faster to actually do most of the things that uh, uh, you want to uh, with beauty loaders, volumes, and so on here and, and, and the other objects. And I see a lot of people using the regular 3ds Max approach, which is going to create tab and clicking on a Krakatoa category, then finding a PT loader here on the list, and then clicking in the scene somewhere, probably in the wrong place. Uh, PT loader automatically asks me what do I want to load. I'm going to load the pipe flow stream, which is basically some particles that were saved uh, moving vertically uh, from particle flow. Right now, I'm loading. 1%, I'm going to load 100%, so I can see them, but they're not even placed where I wanted them, I wanted them to be exactly where they were saved at the origin, but my PT loader was loaded somewhere else, so I can either uncheck the use node transforms, or go and deal with actually moving this uh, object to 0, 0, 0. Compare this to just holding the shift key, clicking the PT loader icon, selecting the flow, and done. At this point, we have the PRT loader created at the origin, as it should, uh, because it was just using the macro uh, uh, script, and it tells you if you hold the shift key while clicking it, it's going to create it at the origin. If you don't hold the shift key, it's still faster than navigating down to the category, because you just click, click at whatever your uh, particles are, and you're done. In the opening of the file browser actually is optional and you can set it in the preferences whether you want that or not. It says open the file dialog after uh, the loader creation, add the current safe path and if uh, there is no current safe path, add the default path. This means that if I go to the settings of Krakatoa and say I'm going to be saving particles now and I'm going to save particles in a folder that is called a pipe flow and this is the file that I'll be saving. I'm not really going to save it because they're already saved, but <coughs> sorry. Um, if I go and try to create a PT loader now, it actually opens in that folder that was specified for saving. The reasoning behind this is if you're currently saving particles out of the main controls of Krakatoa, next time you create a PT loader, chances are, probably 90%, that you want to load exactly what you just saved. So uh, this path uh, is being taken as the default location to open the loader. Uh, dialog. You can also apply PT loader presets because the PT loader has some uh, useful settings, probably. But for example, if you uh, if you don't really want to go and click on the percent of render each time you want to set it to 100 percent, because that's something that should happen automatically whenever you create a PT loader. I don't think it should because sometimes you have millions of particles, but let's assume that in this case it makes sense. You can go here, uh, and in fact I have already created a preset, but I can create one by just going and saying I want to save, the only thing that I want to save is the uh, number of particles in view, percent in viewport. I give it a name, and then I hit the save preset, and it's going to create exactly what was created here. This is the preset, and if I have my percentage set to 1, and select this preset, it loads the settings. And if I say set default, from now on, whenever I create a new PRT loader and pick my particles, it's going to already default to 100%. See, it's already 100% because it loads that preset as a default. If I select custom settings and say uh, set default, it's going to disable the uh, presets. And now if I create a PRT loader, it's back to loading 1%. See, back to 1%. Okay, um, there are also options in the um, preferences to specify where should it open the file browser if there is no sequence loaded here. In my case, it loads on C10 partitions where I save most of my particles. And um, you can um, control a bunch of settings about the PRT loader in the preferences. Take a closer look when you have the time. The uh, PRT loader manipulators is something that even I forget about them sometimes. Let's assume that you loaded your particles and you probably even created a bunch of copies of this uh, PRT loader. Let's create, and those are copies, not instances. So changing the one ob object is not going to change the others. Um, I'll close this for a second and show you what happens. If I enable manipulate mode and I have those guys selected, 
all four of them. I get manipulators on the right side for each one of them. The left side controls the render percentage, the right side controls the viewport percentage. So I can go to 100% here, it jumps with a step of 10, and if I hold shift I can go with fine tuning. And if I move this guy here, it's changing the render settings and the viewport settings a percentage of that. So it's changing both rendering and viewport. And now I can go here and say I want 100% here, 100% here, and about 50 here. And this one should be also 50. So this is much faster than selecting, going, finding where is that one, selecting the value, selecting the next one, looking for that one, typing a new value, and so on. Uh, just selecting the four, entering manipulate mode, and sliding around gives you direct control over that. There is also here a box that lets you scale the icon, but that's a small detail. I went through the PRT loader preset management already, um, so we're going to skip this uh, slide here. Um, we have the value preset buttons, and to show you that instead of typing a value here, uh, instead of typing 100, you should just click the button and use the presets, and they work exactly the way all the other presets in uh, crypto work. So if I set it to 63 and say add, now I have 63 on my list, and I can remove it again if I don't like it to be a preset. The PRT file uh, management uh, of the PRT loader, there is a arrow on the right side and it lets you open a sequence editor and this sequence editor shows you what channels are available there, what is the path being used, allows you to repath if the path has changed and reorder the sequence and enable and disable and compare what the channels are in the different sequences. Uh, you should read the documentation about it, but uh, it's kind of a powerful place to see what's available, and in fact lets you even save sequences. You can save, um, add like 100 PRT sequences there, and then I save a preset, a list of those files, and then load it in another PRT loader instead of recreating the whole thing. But there is also a shortcut for that. For example, if I come here and say I want to add another sequence, let me let me find something that is like this shockwave, for example. I'll add another shockwave. Uh, sequence, and let's assume that I want to add this sequence to a bunch of other PRT loaders, uh, or even a few of those sequences, and instead of going and clicking and, paste and uh, picking again and picking again, I can actually copy and paste. So, uh, for example, let's create a free uh, standing PRT loader without any sequence, and assume that I want to copy the two sequences that I have here over there. I can select the true, click on the button and say copy all file names to Windows Clipboard or copy the selected ones. I say this, then I click here, then I click on the arrow and say paste from Clipboard and I have the two sequences lo loaded. I'll switch to 100% so we see similar results. Right now the shockwaves have automatically set not to load in the viewport, uh, but if I load it I have exactly the same sequence in two places. Um, the cool thing about this is that it's actually uh, pure text. If I open my uh, Max Script listener and paste from Clipboard, this is what it contains. It says PRT load the file list and it lists the two paths. That means that I can go and actually type whatever I want or a copy from Windows Explorer or from a spreadsheet into the Windows Clipboard and then just paste in the PRT load. So if, for example, I go here and call this shockwave bubble, which doesn't really exist as a file, but I'm going to copy into the Windows clipboard and I com come here and say paste, it pastes the shockwave bubble name, which doesn't exist right now, but I might render it, I mean, save it later. Uh, and uh, this is a really useful way to actually uh, pass data, even between two sessions of Max, you can copy a list of all the uh, PAT sequences and move them somewhere else. 